Now to our other top story. The U.S. spying scandal is now spreading to Asia. Chinese officials demanded an explanation from Washington after allegations that the U.S. used Australia's embassies across the region, including the one in Beijing, to conduct spying operations. Meanwhile, an American diplomat was summoned in Indonesia after allegations that the Indonesian president was also spied on. For more on all of this, we go to CCTV's Nathan King, who joins us live from the White House. That's right, Mike. After a week of European pressure over data collection on millions of their citizens, as well as the possible bugging of the German Chancellor's cell phone, the personal one, this crisis is spreading to Asia. A report in an Australian newspaper says Australia's embassy in Beijing was used as a base for US-led spying operations in Asia, without most Australian diplomats even knowing about it. Why would the U.S. use Australia's embassy? Well, Australia is part of the so-called Five Eyes Alliance of countries that share their intelligence and promise not to spy on one another. Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom and the U.S., this tight-knit partnership often cooperates on intelligence gathering and sharing. Responding to the allegations, China says such surveillance would go against international norms. China is extremely concerned about this report and asks that the U.S. offer a clarification and explanation. We also ask that foreign embassies in China and their staff respect the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, and other international treaties and should not get involved in any activities which do not accord with their status or jobs and harm China's security and interests. In response, the U.S. State Department says all U.S. intelligence gathering operations are under review. Uh, what I would convey to uh, people in China is that we're reviewing our programs uh, with a, a range of principles, including uh, making sure that uh, they meet our foreign policy goals. The U.S. is now asking itself this question. Just because an operation, like possibly bugging the German chancellor's cell phone, is technologically possible, is it really advisable? The U.S. is also considering expanding the Five Eyes arrangement and may make similar agreements with close allies like Germany and France. What is unclear is whether that means it will continue to ramp up its surveillance in China and key allies in Asia like Indonesia. Yeah, this review of intelligence activities can't come soon enough for this White House. Remember, it was five months ago that whistleblower Edward Snowden first started leaking information through the press and it's facing new allegations day after day. A nation that used to accuse other countries, including China, of electronic espionage is having to face accusations every single day here. Uh, and, and Nathan, what's interesting about this is this has really uh, opened up a whole other can of rooms. You talked about the uh, five eyes. There, there seems to be these categories of the really close allies that we'll share all this stuff with and then the sort of allies. Um, this is also a delicate dance for the administration as well, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, the one thing that the Germans and the French and potentially the Spanish may be able to get out of all this is joining the sort of Five Eyes cooperative where they share intelligence and don't spy on each other, or at least they say uh, they do, or having some sort of similar arrangement. So uh, remember this hue and cry that we're hearing from Berlin, Paris, uh, Madrid may also be a bargaining chip in the world of intelligence. And then, of course, it's not just about nation states. Google, Yahoo, multinational companies with fantastic reputations. Day after day, there's press reports about how the NSA may have tapped into their networks largely overseas, maybe without their knowing. Google, for example, came out with a statement saying it's outraged if this proves to be true. Now, it's worth emphasizing that the head of the NSA, the U.S. National Security Agency, Keith Alexander, has denied uh, this Google and Yahoo story, but they're on the back foot all the time. Denying, 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 but of course, because of the very nature of their business, they can't come out and say exactly what they're doing. And how crippling has this been for, uh, you know, foreign relations and, uh, you know, the, the obvious uh, job that they have in national security? Well, I, I think the national security issues is, is the most difficult one for the U.S. Uh, James Clapper, the head uh, of uh, intelligence here, said that this has been the most damaging a set of leaks, the Edward Snowden leaks, since he has become an intelligence officer since back in 1963. Now, of course, alliances behind the scenes, uh, what you say behind the scenes is much different than what you say in front of the world's media and the world's camera, and I think the Obama administration feel that they can manage these sort of relationships uh, over time. But the question also comes from allies is, 
Are you going to in uh, share intelligence with me or are you not? And if you think I'm, I'm an ally, then therefore you should. So if you're not doing so, am I actually a foe? I mean, Indonesia is a prime example here. You know, a linchpin of the U.S. Uh, alliance structure in the Asia-Pacific region. If we get more allegations from there, domestic opinion is not going to be very happy. Uh, Nathan King live uh, overlooking the White House.